Welcome to the Department of Materials Engineering. Materials science and engineering involves the manipulation of materials and their properties to produce materials that are useful to society and commercially important. The key materials engineering relationships include the structure, processing and properties of materials and each of these categories has their own special properties which are unique to every particular situation. All engineers, scientists, technologists and industries require materials with better properties, more sustainable, more functional or simply cheaper materials. Materials literally change the way in which we live. The range of industries which employ materials engineers and scientists are aerospace, automotive, biomed, computers, energy, environment, manufacturing and even telecommunications and electronics. The grand challenges for engineering as outlined by the National Science Foundation in the US recently indicated some very grand challenges for engineering for the next hundred years. We're covering these areas in great momentum in materials engineering. The US Materials Genome Initiative is also another indication of how important materials are to the quality of life and our future. Current themes in materials engineering include biomaterials, advanced materials, energy, tissue engineering, green materials engineering, nanomaterials, advanced characterization, modeling and computational materials science and mechanical properties of materials, and also future manufacturing and additive manufacturing. As one example, let's have a look at what current student Nick Boyd had to say about biomaterials. Okay, my name is Nick and I'm here to show you that material engineering is bigger than metals. So I'm working on a project where we're creating nanofibers which we grow stem cells on to improve the longevity of the hip implants. So in front of me is this electrospinner and what you do is you apply high voltage to liquidize plastics and we can create nanofibers. So right now I'm turning up the voltage and each one of those jets is creating nanofibers. So when you look inside the electrospinner, we can see nanofibers being depositing and the idea is we coat them directly onto the hip implant and then grow stem cells on them. And this is an example. Advanced materials projects that we are presently also working on in the department include new aluminium alloys for lighter, faster naval vessels, advanced magnesium body armour for bulletproof protection, and even an ultra lightweight magnesium algin block that weighed only 14 kilograms produced by researchers in conjunction with the CAST Cooperative Research Centre. Other areas include energy where renewable energy is ultra important these days. We have a significant research thrust in flexible solar cells, which can literally change the way in which we live and which we gather and store energy moving into the future. Disensitized solar cells, a special subset which is heavily focused on in the department, is a new type of solar cell and an example of nanomaterials at work, where a dye loaded with nano-sized particles around about 100 atoms in diameter can convert sunlight into an electron flow. Another example includes tissue engineering, and this is what current student Kelly Tang has to say about it. Scientists are like dictators. We thrive or have mastery over our subjects. But in tissue engineering, we are overthrown because we lack the right tools to study something as complex and dynamic as our own cells and tissues. In my research, I'm developing a new light-sensitive material called hydrogels to wrestle back that control. Cells love to grow in hydrogels, and I use light to dictate how the cells are reorganized with laser precision. From this, I can develop stronger, healthier, and more functional tissues towards clinical repair and regeneration. When it comes to advanced characterization, Monash leads the way it's not only atomic resolution that we can see here daily, however, 3D material structures and 3D characterization, looking at crystalline and grain structures in all three dimensions, also adds a lot of value to unraveling the material's genome. The structure of materials and their behavior is also very, very important. An example of this is biomimicry. Let's think about a gecko. They have amazing adhesive powers they can run upside down, even on non-stick surfaces, and carry their own weight. They're also self-cleaning. Wouldn't it be great if we could impart that sort of technology on all sorts of things in our everyday life? 
Another example is future and additive manufacturing. Here at Monash, we're proud to host in the Department of Materials Engineering, the Monash Center for Additive Manufacturing, which includes the world's largest 3D blown laser powder processing facility for producing 3D printed metals. This is what it looks like. This could be the future of manufacturing, and it starts here in materials engineering. The common interests of materials engineers include topics such as chemistry, mathematics, physics, and biology, but most importantly, a flair for the unknown and liking for engineering to be fun is an essential criterion. Why materials engineering at Wayne Ash Engineering is different, and why I think you should study it, is because it has significant infrastructure and massive investment in world-class facilities. Exceptional world rankings, small class sizes, and you're taught by world leaders that focus on their research. We're also co-located with the Australian Synchrotron and Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication, and most of our activities are carried out in the exceptional New Horizons building. The sort of things you'd study in your materials engineering course include metals, polymers, ceramics, biomaterials, nanomaterials, and materials durability and forensics such as fracture and corrosion. You'll also look at composite materials, microstructural evolution, and materials processing. But most importantly of all, you will get a freedom to specialize in a major of your own interest. And that's a very, very special thing. So if you decide you want to focus on biomaterials, you can, or metals you also can. Materials engineers make it happen. Students may also qualify for monetary scholarships, so for more information, please contact Professor Nick Berbalis.